Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the episode Recap and Thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the B segment of episode 5 of Codename Kids Next Door, Operation Mini Golf. We begin this segment with number 1, number 3, number 4, and number 5 trying to escape from a giant kid calling himself Big Brother. Soon enough, though, number two arrives in a dart, one of the kids next door's 2x4 technology, and although he initially misses Big Brother, he ends up ricocheting all over the place, which ends with him knocking Big Brother out after all. On their way back to the treehouse, um, number two's teammates are complimenting him for taking down Big Brother. Suddenly, a stray golf ball hits number two, the Sector V operatives notice that there's a person's face on this particular golf ball, and they end up meeting this person shortly afterwards. Naturally, the golf ball belongs to this particular person, and he demands that they return it to him. He also introduces himself as Rupert Putkin, the world champion of mini golf, although he insists that they refer to the game by its formal title of miniature golf. Most of the Sector V operatives are unimpressed by Rupert's claims and say that number two could easily defeat him in a game of mini golf, but Rupert scoffs at this idea and says that it wouldn't matter how many times he played a game of mini golf against number two, he would still claim victory. Getting fed up with Rupert's insults, number two accepts a challenge against Rupert, and Rupert gloats that he looks forward to claiming victory against number two. So number two and Rupert begin their mini golf match, with the other Sector V operatives being the only audience members, for the time being anyway. And although number two has not played mini golf before, he actually ends up playing the game very well, much to Rupert's uh, surprise. And over the course of the game, more and more audience members um, join in to witness the game. Eventually, we, we reach the final hole, and a reporter has even arrived to um, cover the event. And the reporter comments that if Rupert, or yeah, Rupert's victory depends on if he can get a hole in one or not in, uh, on the final hole. If Rupert doesn't get a hole in one on this final hole, then number two will claim victory. And the reporter adding that, um, that um, uh, Rupert will be disgraced for the rest of his life if he doesn't win this game uh, does not help Rupert out in the, in the, at all. It doesn't help him out at all. So Rupert is trying to calm himself down and trying to encourage himself to get a hole in one. And then number two tells him to calm down because it's just a game. And this ends up angering Rupert, who can't stand the uh, prospect of someone just uh, treating miniature golf as a mere game. And in his fury, he ends up hitting the golf ball, which... Yeah, it doesn't uh, make it into the hole. In fact, it stays in place. So Rupert doesn't get a hole in one, and number two ends up the winner. The reporter questions number two if he intends to uh, go pro, but number two says uh, he doesn't think so because he thinks mini golf is kind of dumb in his words, and Rupert does not take this well. In fact, it's all the way until nighttime when everyone else has left. Rupert is still standing in place and still hearing number two's words in his head. And finally, Rupert uh, is enraged or he snaps and he actually snaps his golf club in half. And at the treehouse, we do see number two is uh, watching the news coverage of his victory at the mini golf game, but then he hears a knock on the door, and number two thinks that maybe it's one of his fans. 
But when he answers the door, a blinding flash um, appears. When number two regains consciousness, he finds himself in... uh, He finds himself in um, a location where um, many uh, monuments... Yeah, he finds himself in a location where he sees a lot of the world monuments together. But then he also sees Rupert, although Rupert is now wearing a golf-themed costume, and he's calling himself the Great Padinsky. And Rupert is uh, notably bigger than number two. Number two is about the size of a golf ball now. And Rupert reveals that he wants a rematch with number two. And he wants this rematch in uh, the ultimate miniature golf course, as the great Padinsky describes it. And number two notices that this golf course is uh, in a basement. But... Rupert also reveals that the monuments number two is seen are not replicas. They're the actual world monuments, but they've been shrunken down in size by Rupert's miniaturization ray. And Rupert had also used the miniaturization ray on number two to shrink him down in size because he wants to put number two at a disadvantage during their rematch. And suddenly we hear... We hear someone's voice from upstairs because, as number two said, this is a basement. Uh, This individual is Rupert's mom who's telling him that dinner is ready. But Rupert insists that he needs to destroy his nemesis. But Mrs. Putkin says that the pork chops are getting cold. But Rupert decides they need to just start the mini golf rematch. So they begin the rematch. Even with uh, number two at a smaller size, he still manages to tie with uh, Rupert before the end of the game. Rupert is baffled by this, but he decides it ultimately doesn't matter because um, of what the uh, final hole for the ultimate miniature golf course is. Rupert calls it the Flaming Hole of Doom. And what happens is if he can... uh, uh, if he can get a hole in one on the uh, on the uh, monument that's the spinning windmill, it turns out the spinning windmill is actually his miniaturization ray, and getting a hole in one will cause the miniaturization ray to um, send a beam down to the Earth's core and shrinking the Earth to the size of a golf ball. The great Putinsky declares that he will play miniature golf with the universe as his golf course. And he decides he wants number two to be the golf ball. So he's trying to calm himself down and encourage himself to get a hole in one. And number two, though, says that he thinks it's ridiculous that Rupert is getting worked up over what he calls a stupid game. And Rupert is set off by this because he does not like anyone dismissing miniature golf as a stupid game. And in his fury, he ends up uh, hitting number two. Um, Yeah, he hits number two with a golf club during his uh, rant. And this causes number two to hit the uh, miniaturization ray and thus it, it activates. And But then it starts to... Yeah, the miniaturization ray starts to um, starts to uh, lose control. It starts to shrink, like ran. Yeah, it shrinks random monuments even smaller than they were already uh, shrunken to. And number two ends up ricocheting all over the place, and he ends up hitting the switch on the miniaturization ray, which changes the setting from smallified to. Bigify. Yes, that's actually what the uh, settings say on the miniaturization ray. I kid you not. So now that the miniaturization ray is actually growing things, some more of the monuments are now growing in size, and even Rupert himself is hit with the ray, so now he's even bigger. But Rupert is um, in dismay or in despair because he's accidentally stepping all over his masterpiece golf course. And he doesn't know what he can do to try and stop the miniaturization ray and all of this confusion. 
but eventually number two uh, continues to ricochet, but eventually number two ends up knocking Rupert out when he hits him, similar to what happened to Big Brother at the beginning of the segment. So the now giant-sized Rupert is knocked out, and some more of the monuments are, are bigger again, and the miniaturization rate ends up being destroyed when it accidentally runs into one of the, uh, one of the monuments. And then number two here is Mrs. Putkin um, questioning Rupert about what's going on down there and threatening to come down to the basement. And number two just takes his moment to uh, get out of there while he can. <laughs> so back at the treehouse, um, number two has finished telling his teammates about what happened. And his teammates compliment him for, for stopping Rupert. But then they decide they want to play a game of ping pong ball. And unfortunately for number two, they decided they wanted to make him the ping pong ball. And that's how we end this segment. So while Operation No Power, or yeah, while some fans have argued that Operation No Power could be considered a number two spotlight appearance, uh, this segment, Operation Mini Golf, definitely is much more clearly a number two spotlight appearance. So depending on how, who you ask, some people might consider this to be um, the first number two spotlight appearance, or some might consider this the second one, depending on where you stand on if Operation No Power is a number two spotlight appearance or not. But in any case, number two does get a lot of attention in this particular segment. And we do get to meet um, two other adversaries, although... They both end up being very minor in the grand scheme of the series. They don't really get any more significant appearances afterwards. They still appear in cameo form, but they never really take the central role. Uh, or yeah, they don't end up becoming the central villains in uh, future appearances. And Big Brother in particular stands out because he's one of the... Yeah, he's one of the few um, kid villains that appears in season one because otherwise we've had the delightful children from down the lane as the uh, kid villains of season one. Oh, and like episode four, the delightful children are absent in both segments of episode five, by the way. But anyway, yeah, Big Brother is one of the other kid villains in the series and he actually appeared in season one when there weren't as many kid villains. But yeah, he doesn't go on to become uh, a bigger player in the in the rogues gallery. He pretty much is just a minor adversary. And it won't be until later seasons. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's not until later seasons when we see more kid villains. So it stood out that there was another kid villain besides the delightful children from down the lane in season one. And the other adversary, Rupert Putkin, a.k.a. the Great Putinsky, yeah, he gets a few cameos here or there, and he's back to his normal size, but yeah, we don't really see him again after, or he doesn't have a central role, I should say. He doesn't end up being the central villain in any future appearances. And speaking of, that's right, yeah, he's back to his normal size in his future cameo appearances, and yeah, they don't actually explain how number two returns to his normal size since the miniaturization ray was destroyed. And although it can easily be explained, although it's, yeah, I think at this point in time, it's not outright stated yet, but it's implied that they still imply it. But later entries establish number two as being the... Uh, as being Sector V's uh, 2x4 technology officer, or pretty much the uh, inventor of Sector V. So it's not hard to imagine that number two may have, may have been able to uh, invent a way to turn himself back to his normal size. And I guess, yeah, even though they probably hadn't thought of it at this time, or yeah, there's a chance that they might not have uh, came up with the idea of the Kids Next Door being a global organization 
at this point in time. But I guess if you really wanted to, you could also argue that maybe maybe um, the uh, the rest of the Kids Next Door organization had a means for number two to return to his normal size. But so yeah, whether you want to say the organization provided him with uh, a way to return to his normal size, or if you want to say number two invented a way to return to his normal size, there is there are at least um, plausible explanations for how number two returns to his proper size. And otherwise, um, yeah, I found this to be a, an entertaining um, segment. Like, yeah, I like to play mini golf. I think it's a fun game to pass the time. And I always did enjoy when shows had um, golf episodes, whether it's um, regular golf or mini golf. Um, I always had fun with those particular um, entries. And this was pretty funny, too, especially because we had a villain who um, took mini golf really seriously. And Rob Paulson was the one who voiced Rupert. And yeah, you could tell he was having a lot of fun with the role. He, he really was chewing the scenery or being a large ham. And well, to be fair, I mean, the series is pretty much a world of ham. Pretty much every character, or most if not every character in the show, at least has one moment where they get to be a large ham. So, <laughs> so Rupert stood out to me in particular. He was very hammy in a world full of ham. And this won't be the only time that Rob Paulson gets to play a, an especially hammy character in the show. He plays several other characters in future entries, but there is one other villain in particular I'm thinking of who really gets hammy, and <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. But yeah, I really enjoyed Rob Paulson's uh, performance as Rupert in this, um, this entry. And otherwise... Yeah, I think that's about it for this uh, particular segment. I really enjoyed it. Like, I always get a kick out of the golf or mini golf um, stories. And I thought Rupert was a really entertaining villain, even if uh, this is his only central role or his only role as a central villain of, a, of an entry. And it was nice to have a more explicit number two spotlight appearance. And I guess if I had to pick, I probably would favor this segment more than the A segment, but I actually don't have anything against the A segment. It's just more if I had to pick one as a favorite, I would pick this one over its sibling segment. But otherwise, yeah, there we go for now. So as of this video, we've now discussed the B segment of episode five of Codenamed Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care and until next time.